If you're like me, and you find that dropping 70 bucks on a Pro Controller can be quite a bit of money, well this series of videos is probably going to be for you. We're going to be reviewing a lot of the third party controllers out there, and we're actually going to be starting by the cheaper end of the wired controllers. Because depending on the types of games you play, some can actually offer you a pretty decent gaming experience, and even in some cases a better gaming experience than the Pro Controller itself. And basically the first controller we're going to be looking at is the PDP Face-Off controller. Now this is a line of controllers. I got the Breath of the Wild a Deluxe Edition, which comes with two removable face plates. But the Face-Off line of controllers are all compatible one to another, meaning that this line gets really interesting the more controllers you buy. The reason why is because each faceplate is removable and interchangeable in between each other. Meaning that if you buy multiple controllers like this, especially the multiple deluxe packs that come with two faceplates, you can actually mix and match whichever controllers you would like. And I actually find this really interesting because number one, they're cheap. 25 to 30 bucks, depending on if the pack comes with one faceplate or two. You can actually buy also additional faceplates for 10 bucks, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later because I think PDP is maybe missing the mark a tiny bit on that side, uh, that aspect. But overall, if you're buying multiples, it's really interesting. And if you have a big family like me, I have four kids, you know that you can't give one kid a Pro Controller and the other one a Joy-Con. They're going to start fighting or they're going to start arguing. So I think this is a really interesting option, especially if you're looking at buying, like I said, multiple controllers and actually for certain types of gameplay, I think this one has actually a jump up on the actual official Pro Controller from Nintendo. So keep tuned, we're going to start by looking at what exactly you get when you get buy one of these controllers, and then we'll move on to a review. Perfect, so let's look at what you get when you buy one of uh, PDP's face-off controllers. So the box art is pretty standard, nothing special. Nice, nice presentation, it says it's an official controller because it is licensed by Nintendo and whatnot. Now let's just get that out of the way because what we want to see is actually what you're getting in the box. And this is what you're getting. So if you get one of the deluxe packs like me, which are the, so far you have the Mario pack, you have the Breath of the Wild pack, uh, you, I think you have one other deluxe pack. If not, basically if you buy one of these standard packs, you're just basically getting exactly what you see here minus the second faceplate. So basically what's really interesting about this pack is that one, the cable is really long. It's a 10 foot cable. So that is something that is really positive about the PDP uh, controller pack. And number two is the face plates are really interesting. I found this pack is actually the most interesting overall. Why? Because you basically get one controller with more of a matte, a grippier finish, and you get one with more of a glossy finish. Meaning that if you are sensitive to uh, how your controller feels, you actually get this pick between the two. And the removal of the faceplate is actually really, really simple, which we'll look at right away to get it out of the way. Basically, you just pull up on the hinges on each side. The faceplate pops off like so. And you pop on your second faceplate. It clicks in and you're good to go with your second faceplate. So switching the faceplate really takes 10 seconds like you saw. And honestly, overall, I was really impressed that Although these are removable faceplates, it doesn't feel like it when you're gripping the controller. But we're going to leave that to the review. Now that you guys saw what it's offering, let's go, let's go look at what I thought about it. Perfect. So now on to the review. So first of all, as you saw, I swapped the faceplate for you guys. Uh, so you guys get to see both you know, versions of this uh, deluxe pack that I got. Uh, and by the way, if any of you at the end of the review want to pick up the controller, affiliate links will be down in the video below. Help out the channel a little bit. So first point, let's get on to feel and build quality. And by the way, if any of you want really big details of how I do my reviews, I actually made a specific video about that. You can follow the link above and you can go check out exactly how I review my controllers. You'll get some details in this video, but I don't want to have to go over it every time. It would add like 10 minutes to the video every time. So first category is out of five and it's build and feel, feel and build quality. And basically this controller is going to score a good 3.5 out of five. 
It doesn't quite feel as good as a first-party controller like Nintendo, built by Nintendo, but at the same time, the feel was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The controller has some decent weight to it without being heavy, which I like because a controller that is too light, in my opinion, I, I don't like it. I need to feel that the controller has a certain weight to it. And at the same time, I was scared that the removable face plates was going to leave like the controller feeling flimsy or, you know, like a clicky sound maybe when you put pressure on the controller, but not at all. If you didn't know this face plate was removable, uh, you wouldn't guess just by looking at the controller. Like you ha the first time I had to remove the face plate, I had to go through the instructions to make sure I wasn't going to break the controller because I actually had to put quite a bit of, you have to put quite a bit of pressure to remove that face plate. So overall, build and feel, feel and build quality, uh, 3.5 out of 5 is a very decent. I can't give it quite that 4 or that 5 just because overall it doesn't feel quite as good as uh, let's say the Nintendo Pro Controller, okay? So the, for the second category features, uh, this category is out of 10 and this controller is going to score a 4 out of 10. But before you think that this is a really bad, I'm gonna to explain to you how the features category works a tiny bit. Uh, the first five points is either you have it and you don't. And this being a wired controller, uh, it's gonna automatically start out a lot lower than a wireless controller. Reason why is because number one, uh, the only point it's getting out of the first five is the fact that it, I don't dock the fact that it doesn't have a rechargeable battery since it's wired and it doesn't actually need a battery. But unfortunately there's no NFC compatibility uh, there's no rumble feature, which they could have maybe included even this being wired. So that's a tiny letdown. Uh, there's unfortunately, it is not wireless, which is one of the other points. And lastly, there's no motion controls. Once again, it's a wired controller. Generally wired controllers will never have compatibility with motion control. So, however, it does get three bonus points. Number one being the fact that the cable is detachable. To me, that's an extra feature. Okay, and it's really worth it. Other extra point it's getting is the removable face plates, which aesthetically and uh, you know just feature-wise, I find was meriting an extra point. And number two, we have two programmable buttons at the back, which is something I actually um, don't appreciate about the Nintendo Pro Controller. The fact that you have no programmable buttons or any features like that. I found that it was a letdown for the Pro Controller when third-party controllers are offering those type of options. So it's scoring a, a 4 out of 5, which for a wired controller, in my opinion, is actually very decent. So now on to the last section, which is the gameplay performance, and that's why all of you are probably here. So keep tuned, this is the most important section. Now the actual gaming performance is where this controller is actually going to shine, in my opinion. Not shine because it's necessarily the best out there, but for the price, it offers a really decently well-rounded package. And without further ado, let's get to the first section, which is FPS and Action 3D Platformers. So this first section, basically, I will score this controller a very decent 7.5 out of 10. Uh, Unfortunately, if your game does depend on motion controls, it isn't compatible, which is why I can't score this controller, in my opinion, any higher than this. But really, if you're playing FPS games, if you're playing uh, 3D action games, this controller is not going to penalize you in any way. It's really a decent gaming experience overall. Uh, the joysticks are really comfortable to play around with. The buttons are responsive. And if you do need the D-pad, the D-pad is de decent in this section. And once again, the programmable buttons can be really a lifesaver if there are certain things that you want to be able to perform without removing your fingers from the joysticks themselves. So for this category, I think this is one of the, uh, this controller actually shines for the price. Moving on to the second category, which would be fighting games. And once again, this controller, in my opinion, actually outshines the Pro Controller. The D-pad on it, although it's not the best in the world, is actually decent. And I would give this a seven out of 10. So the D-pad could be better. For some motions, if you're really deep into Street Fighter, you might actually have some trouble with half circles. I find the quarter circle moves work really, really well. Half circle moves, sometimes there's a little bit of, the D-pad's a little bit too stiff on that, and it not being, uh, 
rounded at the bottom you know there sometimes the motion is a little distracting but overall you're going to be getting a decent gaming experience in my opinion even better than the pro controller for fight fighting games if you're using the d-pad i would really actually recommend this and since the tilt sensor is actually not important generally in these games it's actually not going to impact you negatively at all so someone who pays a lot of fighting games and doesn't want an expensive controller good option for you here Next category, classic 2D and 2D platformers. Once again, another one of those categories where this controller is going to shine. And I'm actually going to give it an 8 out of 10. This is probably the best category overall for this controller, giving it some really decent response on the D-pad. Because those faults that it had for the fighting section where the half circles were sometimes inputted uh, oddly, uh, not going to show up at all in 2D platformers. So if you play things like Mega Man, this controller is really going to shine really, really strongly, especially if you're using the D-pad. Like I said, I was actually impressed by the D-pad. I was expecting it to be really, really bad, and it actually overall impressed me. So this is actually a, a very decent controller. And once again, the reason it can hit the 8 is once it, this is another category that the motion controls are generally not very important for, meaning that this controller really offers you sometimes a better gaming experience than the Pro Controller once again. And those programmable buttons, lifesavers again. I prefer them in a lot of games over using LNR. So honestly, I use them a lot. Very, very positive. Lastly, we have racing games, Mario Kart and whatnot. And in this category, I'm gonna give this controller a 6.5. It's not, why? Because a lot of these games do have the option to use the tilt sensor, so I'm going to duck, like, I was arguing between 7 and 6.5, I, I decided to put it at 6.5 just because for some people the tilt sensor can be really important for the gaming experience in these games. Just have the option. I know that competitive people will not be playing Mario Kart with the tilt sensor, you're going to be using the joystick, but the option isn't even there, which is why I'm going to be docking at a point, you know, a point five extra in this section. But overall, it's going to give you a decent game experience. Better than the dog face controller, but in this one, it, the Pro Controller will give you overall a better gaming experience than it. But, you know, the joystick's nonetheless responsive, buttons responsive, so it's a decent controller for this section nonetheless, although it's probably in my opinion, its weakest performance section. It accepts double button input, so you won't have a trouble, uh, you know, using the buttons while holding a shell in Mario Kart and whatnot. So at the same time, you're not handicapped in any way by using this controller overall. So where does that leave us for this controller? It leaves us, if we tally up the score, 36.5 out of 55. And honestly, that is a solid score. If you're looking, if you're th looking at this and you're like, "Wow, this isn't a good controller," be mistaken. It outscores the dog face controller that you get with your Switch easily, and for the price, it's really a solid offering. Especially considering that it easily loses about four points just for being a wired controller. So if you can put up with wired controllers or you get a little USB hub and you get four of these, which is the way I play with my kids, because honestly, buying four pro controllers was just not an option budget-wise for us at the moment. Honestly, this is really, you're gonna be really satisfied with this little controller here. And I can easily recommend this controller to anyone looking at a cheap budget option that wants a well-rounded controller and who games in multiple types of games out there. So honestly, for 25 or 30 bucks, you won't be disappointed with PDP's controllers. Uh, I really recommend it. Honestly, it's a decent, cheap option out there get for you guys. So, overall, I hope you guys really like this review. I'm trying to work hard on them, so if there's anything you didn't like, do leave it in the comments down below. I'll try to make it better for next time. If there's something you thought I, you know, I didn't look at for the controller, let me know as well. And as usual, please smash that like button and do subscribe if you want to see more content. And basically, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.